Good morning. Welcome to our uh, Bibb County Commission meeting. Today is our first committee meeting on Tuesday, February 23rd. I officially call this meeting to order. Uh, welcome everyone here. I do apologize for being a few minutes late. We had a couple issues we needed to address early on. Before we begin the meeting today, I do want to make a couple of brief comments. Uh, first of those is that uh, we were very fortunate this last week to have uh, a mass vaccination center established in Macon Bibb County. Uh, up until the time that we had that, we had learned approximately 6,000 or better people had received vaccinations in Macon Bibb County. Uh, my understanding is after this week, uh, we'll have an additional 5,500 um, people that scheduled to be vaccinated, which is a great sign. This is a great opportunity for Macon Bibb County uh, to not only take care of its needy citizens in the, in the 1A class, but also to pre-register those for the, for the uh, classes in the future, and also for other areas outside of Macon Bibb County that touch our, our county. Uh, I would like to say that we had a, a great day yesterday in Macon. The, um, although the weather wasn't the best, they were right on time. The logistics were great. Uh, the average wait time through the whole entire process was a, approximately one hour. So we do appreciate everything that we're, our state partners are doing, our GEMA is doing, and certainly our, our military is doing to help accommodate that. Uh, also, everyone that was able to make it out to that site today, thank you once again for coming. The other thing I want to update you on briefly is that yesterday was the final day to hear back on the announcement we had a couple of weeks ago on our blight uh, burn residential structures. Uh, we sent approximately, ended up being just under 16 letters out uh, to the owners of the homes. And uh, we received responses back actually from 20 people. So I was very pleased but surprised to learn that one third of the people did uh, send us some information back to us. Those included checking off one of those options that we included in our, in our initial letter. Uh, a couple of those include um, they have business permits or they have uh, electrical permits that they're going to actually do the work on the property and we're going to put them um, out one month to allow them the opportunity to show that they're doing something. But at the same time, we began yesterday the process of narrowing those remaining uh, numbers down so we can go ahead and order those asbestos testing. We expect that to begin this week. Uh, once we have our first houses that are ready for demolition, uh, we'll come back, um, we'll send notice to the commission as well as the public, and we'll begin the process. I hope that we start at least tearing down those dangerous structures in the next two weeks. So stay tuned. Uh, we do have a, a a large agenda to today, and uh, I know we have a lot of questions because some of these items appear to be uh, new items that need to be discussed in length. But we'll begin with something easy, I hope, is the approval of minutes. So at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes from our committee of the whole meeting on February 9, 2021. Can I get a motion? Got a motion by uh, Mr. Bronson, second by Commissioner Clark. Any discussion on that matter? Here, no discussion. All those in favor of the matter, please say aye. Opposed, no. That motion carries. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to a couple other items. That uh, the first item is the new alcohol, <clears throat> new alcohol beverage licenses. And um, this item here on on A, including the discount zone located at 2031 Sherling Drive in Macon, was an item that was tabled. I think we may have someone here speaking on that today. But first of all, is this an item that the uh, commissioners would like to uh, remove from the table to have a discussion this morning? Got a motion by Commissioner Wynn. Any second? Second by Commissioner Lucas. Okay. Uh, in that regards, uh, Attorney McNeil, do we have someone here today from the discount zone to uh, speak or answer any questions that we're aware of? Okay. If you'll just come up to my attorney McNeil and just tell us where we're at on this. I believe that Commissioner Watkins had some questions before on this at the last meeting and, and perhaps uh, Pro Tem Clark as well. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, yeah, this is, the, uh, this is the alcohol license for discount zone at 2301 Sherling Drive. They're applying for the sale of um, beer and wine by the package to go. And they identified as a, a vice mart on their application. Um, there was some questions raised at the meeting two weeks ago about um, the number of licensed businesses in this area um, on Sherling Drive specifically and um, some of the locations around 
um, it being near a, I think the commissioners mentioned it was near a church, uh, it's near a school. And so um, on this one, I, I actually went out there and looked at the uh, store myself. This is, and, and we've had some um, hiccups with the transition from, from business development services to the uh, tax commissioner's license, getting the data converted over and that kind of thing. So I, I just wanted to put eyes on it to, to, to confirm the answers to the commissioner's questions. So the rules that apply, it can't be within 100 yards of a school ground, school building, college campus, uh, alcohol treatment center, library, or housing authority property. And it can't be within 2,500 feet of a Vice Mart, uh, small box discount store, or other small box retail store licensed to sell alcohol. And so I mapped out where is 2,500 feet um, in a radius around the building. And um, I, I drove out there. I didn't see any stores that uh, were that even looked like they could have been Vice Marts. There were several gas stations uh, selling alcohol within that. It's, it's basically a mile strip if you go 2,500 feet east and west. Um, there's a family dollar right next door to it, but they don't have an alcohol license. They're not selling alcohol. And um, there, the, there's a, a Sherling Library, but that's well over 100 yards away. There's an elementary school, but that's about 2,000 feet away, so that's well outside the 100-yard limit. So essentially, I didn't see anything that, that caused a concern as far as the distance requirements go um, for the discount zone. I spoke to the cashier in the store. Um, there was nobody else in the store but the cashier when I went. And um, what she told me was that this was being filed as a, uh, I'm sorry, she, she told me that uh, somebody would be here and then I spoke to the owner the next day by telephone, and the Mr. owner McNeil, told I believe, me. I believe he's arrived since you began speaking. But you, okay. if you want to close out what you're saying, and we'll we'll bring him up if you'd like to address the commissioners. Okay. So, yeah, that's I'll, I'll end my remarks there. Then I'll let him speak for himself. Thank you, Thank Attorney McNeil. Yes, sir. If you come up and identify yourself, I believe you're the licensee for the discount uh, zone on Sherling Drive. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I'm working as a manager over there uh, since one and a half year. And um, due to the, the change of ownership reason was our previous one of the partner was died. That's the only reason we had to do the change of ownership. Otherwise, we didn't have any other problem. We were doing the smooth operation, no citation, anything. Thank you. I think uh, one of the questions that Commissioner Watkins has is the, the reason for the change of ownership. And what you're telling me is that one of the partners is now deceased. Yes, sir. And that's why you want to go ahead and go through this license renewal. Yes, sir. So we couldn't do the renewal of the license. So we had to go to who make a new corporation and apply all the licenses again. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, you've heard uh, his explanation. Is there anyone who has any further questions to ask of him? Commissioner Lucas? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, my main concern in wanting to hold off on this for a short time was to uh, have people um, to have an opportunity to look at how many alcohol uh, outlets there are on the east side and in that corridor. And I think maybe I'm going to vote to support uh, approval uh, on this because I think we've had enough time for and publicity on it so that people could come if they had uh, additional concerns. The The only thing that some people have said to me is, y'all just watch how many more there are. And I know Sherling Drive is a major thoroughfare. I know that it's business there. And people have a right to uh, own a business and to be profitable. However, the concerns of the neighborhoods and there are a number of neighborhoods on both sides of Sherling Drive, Emory Highway, all, the, all in there. And we have sufficient numbers of alcohol outlets over there. So I just think going forward, we need to be looking at the numbers. As you have said, um, there, there can be too many in a neighborhood. And I think we're getting to that point where there may be too many. But I'm going to support this one because we've responded and given others a chance to ask questions. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. I think that's uh, appropriate. Commissioner Wynn? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, too, am going to support it. Not that I want another uh, sales of alcohol location there, but 
it passes all the tests, and we, we really don't have a basis to deny this to you. And I'm sorry that the past owner is deceased, but I understand that's why you're having to do this. I just think, just like Commissioner Lucas, that we need to watch these in the future and see how many um, continue to come forward. And we're going to have some, I think, additional things that we talk about as far as locations for new alcohol businesses. But I will support this because it does pass, off, pass the test, basically. Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Um, at this point, we're only to a motion and a second on removing that from the tabled items. If there's no further discussion just on the item being tabled, I'll call for a vote this time. So all those in favor of the motion of removing from the table, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. And now at this time, I will entertain a motion to move forward with item A, which is the renewal of the alcohol license for discount zone at 2031 Sterling Drive. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second. Got a second by Commissioner Jones. Any discussion on that item? Hey, no discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, that motion carries, and uh, that renewal will be sent to my office for my signature, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're going to move on to a uh, new alcohol license for Chevron Food Mart uh, at 1108, sorry, my eyes are not good, 1106 Rocky Creek Road, <laughs> making 31210. Uh, I believe we had someone here perhaps from there this morning as well. Attorney McNeil, will you step out and ask the gentleman out in the hallway if, if he's here on that matter, please? On this item, I'm told that we do not have to remove this from a table since it's tabled on the floor, so we'll be voting it up or down unless there's other action that the uh, desired by commissioners. Okay. And Attorney McNeil, if you just give us a brief uh, synopsis of where we're at on the Rocky Creek Road, and then we'll see what the pleasure of the commission is. So on this one, um, I, I called the uh, store owner and I spoke to them. I invited them to come here. I, I understood from the meeting last week that the commission had some questions for the owner, but I didn't understand the specific nature of those questions. So I, I haven't looked into this one at the same level of depth as the discount zone. I just spoke to someone. They said they'd be here. And here we are today. Okay. In your opinion, they, they are otherwise meet the qualifications for renewal with the information that you submitted before? Uh, yes, sir. They, they meet all the requirements. Okay. Okay. Uh, commissioners, you've heard uh, from the attorney there's no one here on behalf of Chevron Food Mart today, which they're not required to be here. Uh, can you let me know what the pleasure of the commission will be? You want to move forward with this? To, yes, Commissioner Watkins, you have a question? Thank you, sir. Um, one of the, when I was researching 1106 Rocket Creek Road, one of the things that came up was that they were in compliance denial status uh, with the state Georgia lottery. Um, and I know a, a large part of that business base is the COAM machine. So I wanted more information about what the status was. Was that from the website, I couldn't tell if that was still pending or had that case been closed. But it, it was an issue that, that it came up. And now we're presented with the change of ownership, and I think we still have some type of legal something pending with the state. And I just wanted some clarity as to what was happening. Okay. I think if you're asking for a motion to table on this to get more information? Yes. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Watkins, a second? Second, second. second by Pro Tem Clark. Any discussion on that matter? What was the motion? Motion to table. Uh, Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the motion to table, please say aye. Opposed, nay. Okay, that passes uh, table except for Commissioner Jones. Thank you. And I'd like to have uh, Dr. Moffitt, if you would, be the person in contact to find out and answer this question. I don't want to table this again next time for that reason. Thank you. We're going to move on to changes of code. Uh, the changes of code specifically is an ordinance to amend Chapter 4 of the code to provide for the training and licensee of private security business employees to require the use of security cameras in certain establishments. This is sponsored by numerous members of the boards. Matter of fact, I think all members uh, of the commissioner, including myself, with the exception of uh, Commissioner Tillman, who is here today. Um, before I ask for a motion to second that on that one, I'll go ahead and get a presentation by Attorney McNeil. And Attorney McNeil, if you could specifically answer the question I received from Commissioner Watkins first. Uh, he did pose a question that I haven't been able to answer him in writing yet uh, last night, but I want you to answer that question for him first, if you don't mind. Okay. And if you could also read the question, if you remember that. Uh, yes, sir. So um, 
generally speaking, this, this imposes requirements relating to security cameras and the use of armed security personnel in um, bars and nightclubs in Macon Bibb County. The question that I received from Commissioner Watkins was, um, how does this address uh, if, if a bar or nightclub wants to uh, contract with armed security personnel as opposed to hiring them as a, a W-2 employee? And so um, the answer is that this ties into the licensing scheme that's set up by the Georgia Board of Private Detectives and Security Agencies, which is a state agency that licenses anyone that's working as either a private investigator or a security service. The way that the licensing scheme works for that board, I, I believe, is somewhat unique. I haven't seen this otherwise. Um, a license that an individual receives to work as a security, uh, a security personnel is tied to a specific employer. So unlike an alcohol server's license or a pilot's license where you can take that and go to any employer, um, if you're working as armed security, you have to have, uh, and this, this is the, you may have heard the term blue card, um, and that's, that's in reference to how the licenses used to appear, but um, you have to have this blue card credential and your employer has to be registered as a private security agency. And so if you are working for, um, on a contract basis, there's a company, ABC Security, for example, that, that lets you, hires you out to other companies to serve as security. ABC Security has to be registered and licensed with the State Board of Private Detectives and Security Agencies as a security company, and you have to be trained and licensed as a security guard tied to their license as your employer. There's an exception in the state law that says that if the company that is hiring you is also the one you're providing security for, then you're allowed to but not required to register um, and get licensed as a security, um, private security guard. And so um, the way that this addresses those security personnel is that bars and nightclubs that are hiring armed security only, if they're unarmed, it, that this doesn't affect their business at all. But if they're hiring and using armed security, then those bars and nightclubs have to be licensed as a, as a um, private security business and their armed security officers have to be licensed through the state board with the blue card permit. And so um, under state law already, if it's a contractual relationship, they have to have this. That's already the state of the law. This just adds the requirement that if it's an in-house employee, then they have to have it also. That, thank you, Attorney McNeil. In regards to that specific question, Commissioner Watkins, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, sir. I think I get it. There's no wiggle room out of the room to apply to 100% bar or nightclub, whether or not it's directly or indirectly. Right. Right. Okay. And could you just uh, touch briefly on the security camera portion of this? These are, these are changes to our code. If you could touch briefly on the requirement for security cameras. Yes, sir. So currently, um, Section 440 of our code requires... Um, security camera checks for people that are getting licensed for package to go sales. Um, so grocery stores and convenience stores and liquor stores, a deputy or, or someone from the sheriff's office goes out and verifies that their security system complies with our code. This uh, code change expands that to add bars and nightclubs. Um, and so the uh, security system has to be sufficient to capture the face and clothing of people entering the establishment uh, standing outside but within 50 feet of the entrance to the establishment or making a purchase from a fixed uh, point of sale or standing on a dance floor or similar area. Um, and, and it makes failure to maintain security cameras uh, a basis for denial or revoking a license. Um, the, the one other, and this is, this is kind of an open question for the commission to consider, but um, I did not include a future effective date on this. The way this is written right now, it takes effect upon the mayor's signature. Um, I don't really have a good sense of how long it might take for the industry to, you know, businesses to install these cameras or get these licenses. And so I wanted to ask the commission, um, you know, if, if, if it feels that putting a 30, 60, 90, six months delay on starting this rule uh, would be appropriate. But I, right now it takes effect upon mayor's signature. Thank you, Attorney. I had discussions with Attorney McNeil in regards to this, and, and we were didn't want to make a personal decision on your bill because a lot of you had requested this. 
on a time limit. Uh, certainly not trying to impose an undue hardship on the, on the business owner. I think we all respect that right, but we also know that we've had situations uh, that we need to have uh, operating security cameras on there. So we'll hear from commissioners if there's a potential time limit that you want to add to this uh, for amended purposes and also if it passes for next week. Commissioner Watkins? What is the intended minimum amount of cameras? And if I'm understanding correct, well, yeah, I'll, I'll stop right there. So it's, it's going to depend on the operations of the individual business. So it has to be, it's a sufficient quantity, quality, and positioning to capture the face and clothing of persons entering through any public entrance, standing outside of the establishment but within 50 feet of any entrance, making any purchase from a fixed point of sale, or standing on any dance floor or similar area. So if you've got a 5,000 square foot facility, you know, you're going to have you're going to have to have more cameras to cover all of those different, you know, angles and points. And that's something that the, the sheriff's office will have to check when you go and get your license. Um, but if, you know, if it's a small place with just one entrance, for example, it, they might be okay with just a few cameras. What, um, so I guess, it's, so who's the decider on that? The sheriff's office, he needs to inspect right. it to, to make it? Sheriff's office will, will go in and look at the coverage of the cameras and the ability of them to, to save data. They have to save the, the footage for 30 days, so make sure they have a system set up to do that. Check what the happens, quality of the pictures. What happens if me as a business says that two cameras is sufficient, you can see everything, and the sheriff's office says, no, you need 12? Is there, what's the check and balance on that? So if, if the sheriff's office um, won't sign off on it, then I suppose it would come to this commission without that approval and and the um, applicant would have a chance to appeal to the commission but there there's not a direct mechanism that's spelled out in here that's just kind of implied based on our current processes okay that all commissioner Watkins I, I yield for a moment okay. anybody else has commissioner Bronson you had a question hey just in regards to when you say quality of camera right we talk about 4k resolution what's the resolution point on this um i know we've seen different videos where it's blurry is all outdoors but in regards to uh certain cameras uh, being able to actually identify a person's face what what is is there a quality level on this that we're looking at or do we have any any say in that it, it's not specified in terms of resolution, video resolution. It says um, sufficient to capture the face and clothing of persons entering in the establishment. And so that's something that the sheriff's, you know, deputies can check in terms of, you know, go stand in front of the camera and let me see what the image looks like. And if you just look like a potato, then you're not, <laughs> you're not going to get approved. But it just depends on, you know, the, it, it's a little bit subjective. Okay. And, and we already have this currently in our C stores as well, so it's, right. it's consistent with the cameras that we are requiring for those. Commissioner Wynn, you had a question? Yes, sir. Um, Michael, uh, the, the, uh, there's a period, it says it's be a periodic inspection by the sheriff. What if there is a failure to, for the camera, it's not working or something? What's the penalty? How often do you fail before you have to be shut down or whatever? What's the penalty here? If the camera is not working right? yes ma'am so if you look on um, page five okay. um, this adds section 440 e which says the failure to have or maintain security cameras in good working condition with sufficient backup storage to permit retrieval of images as required by the section shall be a violation shall be punishable in accordance with the general provisions of section 1 6 of this code which is a maximum penalty of a thousand dollar fine and up to six months in jail as well as by any adverse action against the licensure of the business up to and including revocation or denial, denial of all existing alcohol licenses held by such licensee. And so, you know, it's, it's something where I, I, I don't know the extent, practically speaking, to which the sheriff's office is gonna be, you know, checking every single business's cameras mm -hmm. on a routine basis, but they will be checking periodically. And you can get cited if you're, you know, at the time it's checked, for whatever reason, they're not in good working condition, then that's a reason to cite, and that's a reason to either deny or revoke uh, an alcohol license. So one incident or one finding of a non-working camera can be a citation, result in a citation. Right, right, and then what the actual penalty is, it, it depends on how it's written. Um, if it's written just as a ticket, it would go through the municipal court process. The judge would decide on the fine if there's a conviction there. Um, or if this commission decides to bring it as a licensing action, then that would be up to the commission as to 
whether to revoke, whether to deny renewal, whether to impose conditions on the, the continued operations. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Wayne. Commissioner Tillman, you had a question? Uh, yes, sir. Um, I think uh, it seems like we needed a little bit more input and clarification from the Sheriff Department to be uh, more involved in detail since he's going to have to be the one to uh, oversee uh, a lot of this and uh, we, we can't properly answer his question. One of, one of the reasons why I didn't sign my name on to this that the mayor so much eluded to the public for whatever reason is that uh, as a uh, promoter doing business in events, state law supersedes all of and everything that we're doing. I understand the intent, uh, especially about the security cameras, uh, because I think it should fall in line with an ordinance that we already have, which requires uh, convenience stores. Uh, and I think that language could have been worked out to be the same. And then we don't have to be trying to impose on business owners a particular security personnel. All we had to have said was law enforcement, which is the lead uh, security agency in making bills, uh, has to be considered to be uh, people that, that's hired, as opposed to just saying that we're trying to direct someone of who they should hire and how they should train someone. Everyone don't have those skills. Uh, there are folks that can't get jobs other than security professions that do not qualify to go and uh, be a part of a security agency for whatever reason, but they may have redeemed themselves over the last 10 or 15 years. But there are a lot of folks out there today that just can't get a, uh, that's married, good folks, that can't own a, own a gun or a weapon. And they continue to try. So to be able to put the hardship on people and business owners in making this requirement uh, was one that I just did not see uh, because of the state law that supersedes it. Uh, the cameras, I understand. Uh, and then to be able to directly, I don't understand why we name Pacific places or location where altercations happen. And one of the most serious and heinous crimes in making bib took place at Wings Cafe, but we omitted that. Um, if there was ever a time that we should have uh, been mentioning and looking at what we did to those establishment would have been uh, a couple of years ago where we took drastic hardship measures to revoke that license for two years with Wayne, Wayne's Cafe. So uh, I don't understand the language of why we're mentioning these businesses because a lot of these folks in these cases that we mentioned are still pending. There are defense attorneys out there. There are cases out there. And it appears that making bid for whatever reason uh, may be jeopardized in a possible case. The district attorney uh, needed to be had input and insight because these cases in some of these places that we're mentioning where people were shot or incidents happened, and I think the language is in there because we did not, although the establishment did not have cameras. Uh, if you're going to do that and single out certain places, then you single out all the places that's been burglarized and everything that, that may not have had a camera and so forth. So I don't know, you know, if we're sensationalizing this by mentioning these current events, but there's nothing more heinous that happened in our community besides five people losing their lives at Wings Cafe, and it's not included. So uh, who included the language? Who, in, you know, that's the one thing for me. Why was that language included? And who says to include that language? And then how do we omit other uh, heinous places like Wing Cafe where folks were shot and killed, uh, five folks. And of course, I know they had a camera. So just asking that. Attorney McNeil, I'll make a couple of remarks and you can ask the, answer the questions I don't know the answers to. Uh, first of all, I think the, the document is well drafted, well thought out. What's your opinion? And, and um, Commissioner Tillman. Well drafted, well thought out. And the document received the endorsement of, of eight of the commissioners. Um, any commissioner can add the facts that you want added into there. I believe he specifically added these uh, himself. Certainly no direction of mine. The part about the firearms kind of struck me. Um, 
you have a right to work in an establishment and perhaps be what commonly referred to as a bouncer. What you don't have the right to is to carry a weapon uh, without proper training and a proper card. I think this is what this commission is attempting to do that makes sure if you so choose to have a guard or a bouncer or an employee that carries a firearm um, at the establishment where bad things can happen when it's pulled out, that you um, are properly trained to use that. And I think that's the uh, utmost concern. The other thing is the sheriff requires if his deputies get hired to work at a nightclub that you hire two, uh, two of those, even for the very small place because he wants to have a backup there. Uh, we already have some shortages, so it creates a situation where we couldn't mandate that all 20-something bars we have uh, have two officers there working every night. So I think that would be an undue hardship and an expectation on the sheriff's department as well. Um, the other thing is that we um, the cameras are already in places at these C stores. Um, we think it's an effective way to do this. Certainly this bill can be amended uh, by any commissioners if they get enough votes. And uh, this is something that you asked for uh, to happen. And I appreciate Attorney McNeil getting right on that and making this happen within a, just a few weeks. Uh, so Attorney McNeil, I'll let you answer those questions sure. that Commissioner uh, Tillman asked for you. And then we've also got some comments by Mayor Protein Clark. So I, I would say I drafted this um, subject to the approval of the sponsors. Um, the, the reason why I drafted the provision that talks only about um, these four items that happen, it was, it was based on uh, shooting events that happened at bars and nightclubs in 2020. And so I, I'm not attempting to diminish the significance of the Wings Cafe attack, um, but I, I was focused on more recent events, and so that's why it's, it's uh, listing the items that it lists. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to mention, and I, I appreciate uh, Mayor Miller for pointing out, so um, this, this does not impose any requirements on people that want to work as unarmed bouncers or on businesses that want to hire unarmed bouncers. This also does not impose any requirements on businesses that want to hire post-certified deputies or, or law enforcement officers. If you're already post-certified, then you're exempt under the definition of armed security personnel as it's used in this ordinance. And so you don't have to go get the um, blue card training in addition to being post-certified. If you're, if you're just already post-certified, that's good enough. Thank you, Attorney McNeil. Uh, Protein Clark. Yeah, Michael, what's the um, required notice for businesses in this, <clears throat> that this is going to happen, if, should we pass it? So that was the question that I posed to the commission. That the way it's written right now, this takes effect upon mayor's signature if this is passed, and um, any business that doesn't have a compliant security system or, or you know, permits for armed security personnel would be in violation right away. Um, but to Mayor Miller's point, in the interest of fairness to the industry, it's, it's probably a good policy, it's up to y'all, to give some sort of lead time for people to go out and purchase camera systems and install them, um, to, to get the training that they need for their security personnel. But I, I don't have a good sense of what kind of lead time is appropriate for that, mm -hmm. that so I defer to y'all. Mr. Mayor, at the appropriate time, I'd like to make a motion to amend it to include a 60-day window okay. after signature and require notice to businesses. Okay. We'll hear from other commissioners first, and we'll entertain that motion. Commissioner Watkins? Yeah, so thank you for the clarity on the non, I guess the non-armed security that they, that I guess for clubs that are, clubs and nightclubs that are using bouncers, this affects them not at all. No difference, no change. Right. Um, I guess uh, to add to the concept of adding a 30-day or a window, is there an anticipated um, meeting with the industry or public forum or something to to go over the details? I, I would recommend that we do that. It could be helpful. I think one indication was to, to actually make sure that we publicly announce that and to distribute the material to each of those that have a business license through uh, Wade McCord's office that would fit those categories to make sure they understand that. Um, certainly not opposed to a, to a forum, but it's not, it's one of those things that's not open for discussion at that point if we've already voted. So I'll do whatever the pleasure the, the commission wants to do. i just also add that usually those forums also provide us with some insight from what the industry's thinking. So I, 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 yeah, it would I, be I virtual strongly one. encourage that. Be a virtual one at this time, and, but I'll be happy to look into that. Uh, Commissioner Jones. Sir, thank you, Mayor. I, I conferred with uh, Commissioner Clark next door there, and, and 
to me, I think we need to give ample time for the businesses to do it. I don't know how many companies actually do this kind of work. So I'm, what I'm concerned about is they may be overwhelmed by the number of requests and may not be able to physically get to it. So I was going to suggest July 1 as a start date, giving them plenty of time to seek out the different companies who do it. I think we've probably got more customers than you actually do vendors that actually much more than, than actually do the installation and, uh, of, of the security camera. So that would be my thought. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Commissioner Tillman? Uh, yeah, I, I concur, uh, Commissioner Jones. I think that would be uh, ample time to give these business owners. I do think also, as Commissioner Watkins has said, that once you make a, a serious change like this with all these businesses, that you have to get their input, and we should get their input. And, um, you know, there should not be a rush. I think our rush comes when people are shot in our community and there's an uproar. Uh, a lot of the language in the bill has to do with security guard and, and their training and so forth. Well, uh, to my knowledge, unless you've got some information to share, over the last five to ten years, there's only been one security guard uh, shooting. Uh, and that's the one that you listed in the, in the language on log cabin. So the security officers are not the ones that are shooting folks. And so, but we're asking them and the, in the, in putting the onus on the business owners to uh, provide the security and change their regulations and so forth when it's the patrons that's uh, having the illegal weapons and the illegal guns, but we're putting all of this on the security. Uh, and, and I think we just need to, you know, uh, I, I think it's a, a a good piece of legislation, a working piece of legislation. I don't think it needs to be implemented right now. I think we need to give uh, those businesses an opportunity to have a conversation about it. I think we need to do that, as Commissioner Jones has alluded. Maybe we can work on this and have it ready by July, but something we need to put in place and put these businesses on notice is that this commission wants you to have security cameras in your establishment so that could help us, the public, and law enforcement uh, identify uh, wrongdoers uh, uh, quickly and that you should not be operating a, a, in a business where people are and you don't have these things in place. And I think that's the main focus, and we have directed it for some reason at uh, people who they hire in their, in their business. And so uh, I, I would ask for all of you, I, th I think, you know, uh, you know, I've heard Commissioner, he wants to make an amendment, you know, you can amendment between now and, and next week if we're going to move forward, or can this continue just to be a working document? Thank you, Commissioner Tillman. Commissioner Howell? Uh, I kind of go along with the uh, putting it off until July or putting a deadline on July for uh, businesses currently in business or currently operating. Uh, my problem is before we reinstate or approve any more businesses those businesses should comply before they open the door in my opinion mr wilder yeah i'm in agreement we definitely need to come up with a time frame whatever everybody feels like uh mutual you know mutual time frame 60 90 days uh, i feel that we're going to find that most of these businesses are already going to have cameras i don't think everyone's going to have to go buy one buy the cameras but I just don't think we need to drag our feet. And part of the discussion is why are we, uh, you know, requiring all these things? That, due to the amount of things that happened in this county last year, it got a lot of people talking. And it just raised a lot of questions. And these are the questions that came up. That's why I think addressing them all at one time now is a good thing. Thank you, Mr. Water. Commissioner Lucas. Yeah, I, I agree that sometimes, you know, as a legislative body, you have to go ahead and take action. And we have plenty of, of information that backs up the decisions that we're uh, seeking to, uh, to make. Uh, I do agree, though, that uh, putting this, uh, having the implementation date set at July makes, makes sense because there are some... Um, things that these businesses will have to do. The other thing that I think is we ought to be a little bit more specific in what we require as far as those cameras. Because what I think 
is a, a camera, to your point, is a camera that adequately captures, you know, what captures what's going on, that might be different from what, so I think there needs to be at least a little bit more uh, specifics on that particular point. But I think we ought to go ahead and pass this to send that message that we want that this is about safety, this is about security, and uh, this will improve business. And I think we ought to go ahead and do that, but then we ought to continue working on those other two elements and make it July 1 for implementation. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Commissioner Jones? Yes, sir, I'd just like to make the amendment that, that shall be effective July 1, and then I think Commissioner Waller and Commissioner Howell make good points. They should be, uh, you know, somebody supplying then that, that July 1 still still is in place. And as to the resolution of the cameras, Michael, it has language, uh, refresh my memory, shall be in normal operating condition at all times. Does it have something along those lines? Um. And maybe it should say that the resolution shall be acceptable to Bibb County Sheriff's Department. So for the resolution of the, the image, what it says is it has to be of sufficient quality and positioning to capture the face and clothing of persons entering the establishment through any public entrance, standing outside within 50 feet of the entrance, uh, making a purchase from a fixed point of sale, or standing on a dance floor or similar designated area. So it doesn't have like, it doesn't say like 720 or 1080. It doesn't have like a, a yeah. an industry resolution. It just says it has that, to be good That's even to better. And does it say it shall be in normal operating condition at all times? Right. The failure to have or maintain in good working condition with sufficient backup storage to permit the retrieval of images is a violation. <coughs> okay. Then my amendment would be, shall be effective July 1 would be my amendment. My proposal. Okay. Commissioner Bronson. For the resolution, I, I would hope that we would include a particular resolution for the cameras. And it should be a baseline resolution that goes from there up. Working in law enforcement myself, working military myself, I've seen where people say, well, I, I have a camera up. Mm -hmm. And granted, it may catch my face coming in. But after that, the focus of it is garbage. And we've seen that across the board. So I think we need to be proactive in that matter to ensure that whatever the standard is, that we hold that standard to that piece. Uh, also to include the time frame for rendering that video in the event that something happens, if a shooting happens, they should be able to render that video within a certain time frame to the Sheriff's Department. So we need to be very keen or very particular about what we're requesting from our from our businesses. Commissioner, I'll approach Ann Clark. Yeah, the, with the um, Commissioner Jones's amendment, uh, I'll just, in order to, I, I think Commissioner Braun, or excuse me, uh, Commissioner Howell and Commissioner Wilder have a good point. I think um, if we aren't specific on a new application complying between now or, or passage in July 1st, that we should be specific that they have to also uh, be compliant on application if they apply in that window as well. Okay. Uh, we've had very good discussion on this item. At this time, I'm going to ask one of the sponsors who would like to make the uh, one amendment for consideration at a time. So, uh, Commissioner Jones, if you'd like to make that uh, proposal to the commission, we'll work that language out and go ahead and see if we get a second. Yes, sir. The amendment shall simply read, shall be effective July 1, 2021. Got a second by Commissioner Tillman. Uh, any discussion on that item, Commissioner Bronson? Discussion. Okay. Uh, here, no further discussion. All those in favor of that amendment uh, as seconded, please say aye. Point of order, Mr. Aye. Aye. I, I'm me, sorry. I, I just like clarification. Is that so July 1 for everyone or July 1 but if you are applying between when this takes effect and July 1, then you have to comply when you, when you apply for your license. Shall be effective July 1 for any and all people. So okay. if they're applying okay. June 1st, then they need to have it in place. Okay. I'm, when, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. When they open the doors. Yeah, I want to make sure we're clear. Everybody's on clear. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries and has to be sent to the consent agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, hopefully... A couple of items that won't require a whole lot of attention, but very important items. Appointments to authorities, boards, and commissions. Um, item 4A is a resolution appointing Mayor Pro Tem Seth Clark to the Macon Bibb County Board of Health to succeed former Commissioner Joe Allen. That motion is sponsored by myself. Uh, that is my motion. Can I get a second? Got a second by Commissioner Howell. Uh, any discussion on that matter? 
Hearing no discussion, all those in favor of the matter, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Now that motion carries. We'll move on to item 4B, a resolution reappointing Commissioner Elaine Lucas to the Macon Bibb County Board of Health. That is my motion. Can I get a second? Second. Got a second by Pro Tem Clark. Any discussion on that matter? Commissioner Lucas. Um, yes, sir. I've, um, uh, I remember uh, former, uh, the late Dolores Brooks, who uh, was the first black female to um, serve on the Macon City Council. And Dolores served for a lot of years on the Macon, Macon Board of Health. Making their board of health, and I started uh, as a member of the board of health uh, under Dolores Brooks, and with her, her help, uh, learned an awful lot about health care and the delivery to so or the lack thereof in the community from from Dolores Brooks, and. Um, I've uh, been a member of that board for a number of years, and so I am very pleased and thankful to be recommended for reappointment. We have some very exciting things going on at the Board of Health, and uh, Commissioner Clark, you'll be real pleased once you get there to see that not only uh, have we supported um, a new facility, which is on Forsyth, and you've seen all the work going on there. It's going to be a wonderful facility that replaces that small um, maze of offices over at the present Board of Health on Emory Highway. The other thing I want to mention, too, is that this Board of Health has adopted a resolution that looks at all of the negative health care outcomes that we have in this community. And they voted unanimously to commit to working with the new administrator, Dr. Jimmy Smith, uh, in alleviating some of those negative outcomes. Many of them um, are the ones that we know. We've had presentation on top of presentation about our negative outcomes and how some communities uh, are not benefiting from the progress that's being made in health care. And so those are two things that uh, I am really pleased to continue working on that's getting us in that new facility. It'll be on the bus line. They've made provisions to have a bus stop in front of the health department and then provisions to slow down the traffic in there because it's right at the interstate. So there's just, there's just been a lot done and all of you will be invited to take, well of course the mayor will be there and all of you to take part in the opening in the spring I believe and then also to get to work on uh, helping to reduce the negative health in, uh, outcomes that we have in the community, including uh, negative mental health outcomes. So thank you, and I really would appreciate your vote of support to continue the work uh, on the health department. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas, and thank you for once again agreeing to serve on that board. Um, it's certainly my recommendation after speaking with you in the beginning anyway, but I know the Board of Health certainly advocated for you to be on that board again, so I'm glad you're willing to serve. Uh, this time we do have a, a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries. We move on to item C, which is a resolution appointing Jake Hall and Paul Little to the Equity and Civilian Advisory Board. That's a motion sponsored by Commissioner Virgil Watkins. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, would you like to make that motion? Oh. Got a motion by Commissioner Watkins. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Bronson. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, you got to make any comments on that before we vote? So we formed the Equity and Civility Advisory Board uh, for the primary purpose of reviewing responses from our um, equity assessment RFP. We received uh, two valid responses, uh, and the board is met once already and slated to meet again in the near future. Uh, these two individuals um, attended that meeting but are, and are very engaged, but um, currently not on the board, so we're asking for that addition. Thank you, Commissioner Watkins. Uh, any further comments? We do have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. 
Uh, that motion carries and has to be sent to consent agenda. And Commissioner Watkins, if you could ask uh, Jake Hall as well as Paul Woodard to be here next Tuesday's meeting to be recognized, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. We're going to move on to items for financial consideration. Uh, the first item, 5A, is an ordinance to authorize a supplemental budget appropriation from insurance premium tax and lost LOST surplus revenues to various departmental budgets and the total amount of $3,000,000. $83,972 providing funding for expenses related to pay scale implementation. That is my motion. Can I get a second? second. Got a second by Commissioner Howell. I do know we have some discussion on that matter and some questions from Commissioner Watkins. Go ahead, Commissioner Watkins. Oh, yes, I want to just follow up. I quickly, so I understand this is something we have to do, and I'm excited about doing it, um, funding funding those, those new pay scale adjustments. But could you remind me of the status of the, the, low, the, the lost uh, local option sales tax and the insurance premium? I can recall from my last uh, financial update that the, fin the insurance premium was, about, was over 1.6. That made sense. But the, the loss having, or the sales tax, Having addition was new information to me. So just could you go over that for me? Yes, sir. Uh, the loss, uh, we are about oh, $800,000 over last year um, in actual revenue has come in. For the insurance premium, um, that's roughly uh, 15, about 700000 um, over um, last year. So if you take that with the current uh, vacancies that are in the departments, uh, we were able to use that amount to cover the implementation for the pay scale. So, if you recall, during the budget process, we told you that we would look at maybe funding it from fund balance, depending on the year. But if you remember during the budget process, that was right when COVID was, uh, we had a lot of questions. So we anticipated and we budgeted low in a lot of items, uh, which caused us to include fund balance in there. But as the years progress, uh, we are... Uh, seeing numbers higher than what we budgeted and so we're able to use those numbers um, for the pay scale which was um, the first full pay period in january and so it was better on recommendation from finance and our budget team to go ahead and pay out everything that way we will know what the exact number was that we needed to implement and that number is the number that's in the ordinance for you today so i guess a couple of things yes sir like in the ordinance, it says 1.6 from insurance premium and then 1.4 from the sales tax. But that's not what I just heard. Am I off on that? And does it matter? Right? No, it, it matters. Those are rough numbers I, I, pull, I pulled this morning from, from, the, from the, in the ordinance, from the document. I have Julie, because she verified the numbers that I pulled this number. So this tell morning. me, I think that what... Dr. Moffat is saying is that if you remember at the beginning of the budget year, we said we might only bring in 26 million in, in lost, although the previous year we had had about 33 million because we were fearful that people were not going to have the money to spend and you wouldn't have that collection. But we are actually seeing our collection very strong. It's about $800,000 more than this time last year. And part of that is the state implemented the marketplace tax collection that began April 1st. So when people were sitting at home and buying things that had to be delivered through an Amazon or Walmart or other marketplace facilitators, we have received some additional lost. So instead of having to use the words fund balance, we are actually just recognizing the revenue that we have collected to date and anticipate will continue at that rate. So it's really just using that insurance premium tax and the um, lost collection instead of using the words fund balance because we are seeing the collection come in so so insurance premium like the 1.6 is based on except you've we received 700 year to date which is at the halfway point so you're multiplying that by two you're going to get more of that. Because we're anticipating more insurance premium to come in? We budgeted the insurance premium tax low as well, and it came in higher than it was last year. Yeah, but I, I know it doesn't come in. Typically, it comes in a big lump, right? One lump. One lump. Mm -hmm. And so if it only came in at 700 where is the extra, the second 700 if it comes? We, we budgeted less. Remember, we thought we may not even have insurance premium tax collection. So... I can grab you that exact number, and this may help help you. 
Yeah, and I think I understand your question a little better. Is that you are right. We are talking for the rest of the year. So when you think about loss, that is the estimated. I was giving you as of today number from your question and I, yesterday. And I'm, I'm working with that. Yeah, okay. But if, if the insurance premium comes in in one lump sum, and it's only 700000 and maybe that's not the right number, but I, I thought that's what I heard. How do we get to the 1.6 number? Because the question you asked in the email was what was – what did we receive last year and then what did we receive this year that right. difference is about seven hundred thousand right but for right. this year for this year we only budgeted that we thought we would get ten million eight hundred and thirty four thousand but we've actually received twelve thousand five hundred and one so i think that's the number you're trying to compare I, I, okay you have another question commissioner Watkins? No, I was just, I, I would look, can, could y'all put that in writing, like, someplace so I could see it, because it's That's no problem. big. But I get it, everybody else understands, so I'll yield. No, the, we want to make sure you got all the information you need to work with, so we'll, we'll direct uh, Dr. Moffitt and his staff to get the information that you need in writing. Thank you. Commissioner Tillman? Uh, just a quick question. When we passed this last year, we had told um, uh, commission and employees that, the first pay period that everybody would see these uh, raises and so forth. That didn't happen. No, it, it did. It did happen. The first, the first check in January, the full first check in January, January 29th, everybody got something. Right. Well, the, well that was, the first full check in January would have been the 29th. The pay period started on the 10th. So, so that's how you yeah, and I was just, because we know, I just never got a clarification. Yeah, yeah, you know? the, the first full. So, so just explain that pay period, because yeah. folks have asked. The first pay period was from the 10th through the 24th, okay. and that check was the 29th. Okay. And the reason why we chose the 10th, that way the pay period before that covered two years, the end of the last week of December and the last week of, and the first week of January, and that's an accounting nightmare. So we went with the first clear January 10th, that first full pay period in January. So on January 29th, everyone got a salary adjustment. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Moffitt. Got a question? Any other questions, Commissioner Lucas? Yeah, uh, Dr. Moffitt, uh, where did we end up with our lowest paid employees? Because, you know, that was a major concern that we had. I know that the, there was an increase, but what ended up being the kind of average percentage I think the or, lowest salary is 26,000 20 20 so that's 20 1350 per hour is that what, what it was 2080 hold on if that's 26 I tell you, I can have that before the end of this mm -hmm. meeting I just need and, to verify that. and where does that put us as far as <laughs> You know what? That's still low. I know, but and I know. we're working on. We've done I, I, a lot, but I still want to know. So, and everybody else needs to hear that, so that we know that we've still got work to do. Right. On, I, 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 on, on average, about twelve seventy four an hour. The lowest on average, custodial service worker, sanitation worker, somewhere between that twelve twelve fifty and twelve seventy four an hour. What was it before? Um, I think it was like. 1320, you recall? I know you advocate moving it when like 1320. I mean, I'm sorry, 12. I'm, I'm sorry, 1120. I'm sorry, 1120. I was wondering 1120. how you went from I was about to say. It was like going in the wrong direction. <laughs> right. Because I know we have people advocated to match the oh, yeah. federal conversation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas. Thank you. Uh, no further questions. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. That motion carries be moved to consent agenda. We'll move on to 5B. This is an ordinance to authorize a budget transfer from within the Cooperative Extension Service Departmental Budget in the amount of $13,000 to provide for wages for temporary workers. That is my motion. Can I get a second? Got a motion and a second by uh, Commissioner Jones. Uh, what I understand is that this is just a moving some funds within their own budget. It's not any new money because it made the threshold of $10,000. Uh, one of their part-time people went full-time. Is that correct? Yes, sir, that is correct. We have a motion and a second. I see no other hands. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, Commissioner Watkins, did you have a late question? Uh, get, next, next question. Get ready for the next one? Okay. Um, 5C is an ordinance to authorize a budget transfer from within Lake Tobisofsky found in a total amount of $15,500 to 
to provide for funds for campground utilities or facilities. That's my motion. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. A discussion, Commissioner Watkins? Not 15000 is a small amount of money, but I'm curious as to what is our current cash on hand, what's our fund balance? Okay, our current fund balance um, as of June 30th is $33 million. $33 million. If you recall the fund balance, we are trying to uh, get to that 45-day um, internal policy number. Um, so we are working on that. What, what do we, you mentioned that's June. Yes. What do we anticipate it to be February? Um, or January? We currently anticipate an additional 10 million at the end of this year. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. We do have a motion. Is any further question on that, that item? Mr. Watkins? Uh, tell me, just while in, it's more general to the finances, you, you mentioned that a lot of these are based on the um, vacancies. Not a lot, but yes. Well, I know a lot of these are dealing with departments. And what are the current number of vacancies and how much is funded in that? Um, I don't know the exact number of vacancies, but right now we're averaging about, uh, we anticipate uh, a savings of about $2.1 million in vacancies this fiscal year. Now that's for the whole fiscal year or? Yes. Okay. If you recall during the budget, uh, we reduced the amount of vacancies. And I'm right to say that even though you mentioned vacancies in the 3 million, that none of that 2.1 is included in that because it was just from the Correct. sales tax and insurance. Correct. Okay. You good? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Uh, we do have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, that motion carries to be sent to consent agenda. Move on to item 5D. That's the ordinance to authorize a budget transfer from within parts and beautification departmental budget in a total amount of $50,000 to provide for funds for the payment of overtime expenses. Uh, I have a motion. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you joined in that ordinance. Can you get that motion? We got a motion by Commissioner uh, Bronson. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Jones. Any discussion on that matter? Yeah. Who's that, Commissioner Lucas? Thank you. I, I wanted to um, ask how we're doing. I know uh, Parks and Beautification has been given an awful lot to do. And with the cemetery, the has Riverside come on? Have we? I think it's come okay. on. Y'all passed it, but we haven't started the work yet, I believe. Uh, I can answer your question. I think I anticipate oh, okay. with you. Okay. I just wondered, you know, how how they're doing and, and what is causing the additional uh, overtime. The reason they have the $50,000 overtime, my understanding is because they have about eight unfilled positions, vacancies. So they're basically using those vacancies that they have uh, working overtime, which right now, uh, is a lot less expensive to do, and there's some overtime being awarded. However, our plan, um, our, 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 what we see in the foreseeable future, is since we will no longer be operating a solid waste department in the sense of a landfill, since it will be closing, uh, to fill some of those positions on a lateral transfer from the solid waste department to the parks and beautification, as well as public works. Uh, we've had substantial difficulty getting uh, employees in those positions and a high turnover rate. Uh, for public works and parts and beautification, so we believe we can fill those positions with, from within so we don't lose any employees uh, during our solid waste plan. So this 50000 here is strictly from vacancies uh, created the overtime. Uh, we won't have okay. this amount when we, we get fully staffed. Okay. Can I ask one more, one sure. more thing? The company that's providing the boat rides and canoe, uh, what was that? Company are they still in place? And it seems like they participated in a cleanup or something just the river recently cleanup. along the river at Amundsen. Yeah. I just wondered the status of that company and whether we're getting any, whether Macon Bib is getting any money from that. Sure, Attorney McNeil. This um, is in Amundsen River Park. Is that correct? Go ahead. Right. Uh, so that company, when when COVID hit. We were their only contract that wasn't in a national park, and all the national parks closed, so that company went out of business, and we've terminated mm -hmm. our contract with them. 
Oh, that was okay. that was last summer, I think, that that happened. What were they? I think it was called five, three dollar, five dollar tubes. The old Mogi was I don't. I don't Okmogi Outfitters? <laughs> maybe? I, no, that's not here. That's these guys. Okay. Uh, we'll get on that. Uh, Commissioner Lucas, did you have further too. questions? All, yeah, all, all, all stuff. All okay. stuff. I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Lucas has no further questions. Commissioner Lynn, when? Yeah, um, when we have, are the, bud the positions that we're lacking, are they budgeted already so that when we add those people or move those people over? Yes, yes ma'am. in the budget? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the fifty thousand is just for the overtime we had to pay Correct. for the past work. Correct. Okay. Any other questions, for commissioners? Are they posted? Are they eight people, or will they remain vacant? We're planning on. I don't. I don't think we're posting those yet, uh, Commissioner Watkins, because we want to fill those with our own people and give those the first options that are moving over from solid waste. Okay. Yeah, that's that's the intent, so we don't we can we can consolidate and do attrition as opposed to laying off any employees if we don't have a landfill. So that would be our intent. Um, we have a motion and second. Seems no other lights. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Uh, that motion carries unanimously. We'll be sent to consent agenda. Move on to 5E, this ordinance to amend the Office of Communications Organizational Chart for the purpose of adding two new public relations specialist positions to provide for supplemental funding for the fund balance in the amount of $58,397. That is my motion. Can I get a second? Got a second by Commissioner Bronson. Uh, discussion, Commissioner Wynn. Sir, you and I talked about this yesterday, um, but I was curious, or anyway, I was curious as to why we were adding two positions. I know Chris will be able to, to address that, but that's what I wanted to know is what the two positions would be. Go ahead, Mr. Four. Yes, ma'am. This would actually add a videographer full time, someone to handle all of our visual services. A photographer, is that what you said? Visu a videographer. Oh, videographer. They would also coordinate with some of our freelance co uh, photography services. The other person would be more of a writer and event coordinator. One of the things we miss with how fast we're moving is the depth of storytelling. We can put out a press release, but we need a writer who can go interview the subjects and thoroughly tell the story of what decisions y'all are doing are impacting the community. I think the other thing, Commissioner Wynn, just want to interject here, is that previously during budget cuts, we cut a lot of those positions out. And I know uh, Rachel Gamble doesn't mind me mentioning her name, but she actually is one person doing the work of about four from previous years. Yeah, we appreciate um, her. I, I think that one of and, the things... And you too, Chris. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> one of the things that I, I have heard throughout the community, and as a matter of fact, I think uh, myself as well as Pro Tem Clark and Commissioner Watkins was on a clubhouse chat just a couple, uh, a couple of nights ago, and uh, one of the things that we may take for granted is everybody's getting the same communications. And really, they're not. We're not getting out to the community like we should to tell our story. We're not telling the positive things that's going on in Macon Bibb County. And something as simple as secret fix, we assume that everybody in all parts of the community are knowing about. Uh, and that's not entirely true. As a matter of fact, there are some, uh, some um, members and some areas in our community that have no uh, good information. Mm -hmm. And this, this position that we're talking about adding will be that communication that we need to engage all the people in Macon Big County, not just a select few. That is part of the purpose of this. The, the budget does look better than it did in 2018 when you had to make some hard choices to eliminate those positions. So that is one reason that we're asking for these positions. Uh, that's all I'm going to say on this right now. I hope that you will agree on that. Commissioner Wynn, I think you had a follow-up question. It's just a follow-up. Mm -hmm. we? Do you work with Visit Macon closely on that? Because I know that's tourism and they bring people in, but do you work with them on any PR and that kind of Whenever thing? Whenever they create content, mm -hmm. we're able to share it um, but with additional people we can work more closely with community groups to help them develop that content okay. um, I like to point out our reporters in town sometimes turn two and three stories in a day but it takes them eight nine hours to do that it's a lot of work for three minutes a story so these positions will help us create the content and we can work more closely with groups like visit Macon Thank you, Commissioner Wynn. Commissioner Lucas um, yes I wanted to ask uh, I think some of you have heard me ask over the years about getting our channel 14 on continuously we, rather than a few things here and there and you know i think people appreciate what they do get but you go to savannah and you tune in to their public access uh, channel they have the information on there 24 7. so i I'm just wondering what the status is of we're, our... We're currently talking to IT 
for a, a new scheduling system to get it fully back up and running. The issue comes with the fresh content is when we lost a couple people a few years ago, we stopped running out of some of that fresh content because we would do the live videos that we do at events, but we would not have the time to go back and create those shorter videos that we were airing at one time. So yes, with the additional person, we'd be able to create more content for 14 and I'd be able to focus, instead of me writing, I can focus on getting that system up and running with IT's partnership. Mm -hmm. Follow up, Commissioner Lucas. This, I see some. Uh, I see some questions in your head. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't answer your question. I did okay. <laughs> the answer is Sorry, yes. I the answer is yes. Got a zoom down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always good if the answer is yes. What's, what's going to be the cost of getting everything in place? But getting the cost, the cost what we need. The next four months, it's uh, fifty-eight thousand dollars. That includes just shy of fifty for salaries and benefits. That's four months. Um, I obviously won't have anyone hired by next week, so it would be actually be less in this budget year. I'm, I'm talking She's about, talking about the, the, cost of the fourteen and yeah. uh, everything uh, to get the system. Well, I'm hoping the, IT can create something for us in-house. The Latronic scheduler that is what puts it on fourteen is outdated. And so I need to get a tech review of it if it could be fixed and what IT can do in-house. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Commissioner Watkins. So it's not, it's not hard for me to believe that there's a department in our county that is short-staffed. Uh, easy, easy to accept. So I'm curious, and I, and I see this one, and part of it, I get it. I see you every day, and it benefits us as elected officials. We get our stories out more, but what's the what's the actual plan here what is like in totality how many new positions are we anticipating being asked in the next couple of weeks i think i asked that before well too. in the next couple of weeks none um anything else coming up we're going to uh, address in the budget but y'all are being very active more than ever and so chris has been advocating for this since i've been here and so we decided to go ahead and make it a priority to bring it to you uh, because he needs to start putting things in place as you just asked about the equipment getting things going especially in the age of COVID how we do different things so to answer your question we I don't anticipate bringing you in more positions until the budget process but for this right here um, y'all are requiring more data to get out into the community y'all are requiring more um, information to get out in the community and so this is the only way we can do it Thank you, Mr. Watkins. Mr. Jones? Yes, sir. Chris, you lost me on that last statement. Uh, the $58,000 covers what and for how long? The, the, in the supplemental budget right now, it's around $58,000. That covers, covers salaries, benefits, phones, and computers because we don't have any spare computers. Yeah, and I, and I think if you refer to the document that was included in your package, it's broken. It's, or it's for two people. It's yes. broken down for two people, including their salaries, uh, their benefits, and a, and a cell phone usage on there. That's two people for the remainder of this year. That's the total amount for two people. Okay, but not four months. It's for the rest of this year. You're the talking about through, fiscal June, year. through June 30th. Yes, sir. Through the fiscal year. Okay. Yes. Uh, Pro Tem Clark? Uh, yeah, I just got a couple questions for Chris. So the when you were describing the, the what the new positions could do um, you said that they could be a voice for a storytelling voice not just for us but for community groups mm -hmm. correct the either recently a group of Pleasant Hill leaders that are here today have done a training on C-Click Fix is this something that these two positions could support to get the word out as opposed to just the Macon Bibb County Facebook department sharing a 41 clip about that uh, we were we were very excited when um, one Macon picked up that and uh -huh. worked in the neighbors to do it the one thing we missed, even though that it did get media coverage, we didn't have someone from our own staff to go create the how-to video that then could be shared to the further group. So you had that individual training, but we don't have the marketing material to put it out in other manners. And if you have that marketing material and the resources, and you're able to cover things like the uh, Pleasant Hill Neighborhood Organization, for example, training their training uh, Pleasant Hill residents on how to uh, access and use C Click Fix, mm -hmm. do you? Um, uh, do you think that it will increase um, reporting and response time by the county for problems in the community? The more people who know how to use it effectively, the more people can tell us what needs to be fixed. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you, Pro Tem Clark. If we had no other questions, we do have a motion and second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. 
That motion carries be sent to consent agenda. Uh, we're going to move on to the item F, which is an ordinance to amend the Recreation Department's organizational chart for purpose of adding a new community center coordinator to position to provide for supplemental funding from fund balance in the amount of 16584 uh, That motion is uh, sponsored by myself and Commissioner Bronson. Commissioner Bronson, would you like to make that motion? Got a motion by Commissioner Bronson. Can I get a second? Second by Commissioner Wynn. Um, any discussion? Commissioner Lucas? Um, I certainly want to be added as a co-sponsor yes, uh, on this um, because this uh, involves uh, Kings Park and they've got a brand new community center out there that uh, the previous administration funded through blight funds so I'd like to be added. Thank you, Commissioner Lucas, for your support and uh, support on that, and especially uh, being one of the sponsors. Um, we have a motion and second. I see no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. aye. Opposed, nay. Uh, likewise, that motion carries and ends be sent to consent agenda. We're going to move on to item G, which is a ordinance to authorize appropriation of fourteen million seven hundred fourteen thousand two hundred eleven dollars in two thousand eighteen splice proceeds for various plan expenditures as described herein. That motion is sponsored by myself. Can I get a second? Got a second by Commissioner Howell. We have a motion and a second uh, on that matter. Commissioner Watkins, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, what was my question? In front of you. Um, the short answer is this is just the yearly appropriations from the timeline. And so it just approves everything for that, for that year. That's oh, yeah. Time. So this is the SPLOS appropriation. So I'm curious. So we're appropriating the, the annual. The 2.6 million that's allocated towards public safety. Yes, sir. It it lines out. I'm curious as whether or not that is including uh, upgrades to the jail for the police department. I mean, for the sheriff's department. No, sir. At this time, uh, I have not had any conversations with the sheriff about what his plan is for that. But what the initial uh, 2.8 and this was was for the um, possibility of a, another fire station. But based on your field trip a couple of weeks ago, um, the, the body has made it um, has made us um, more than aware that you would like us to price out a training uh, center with a couple of simulators. And so we're going to start that process of seeing how much that would cost and come back to you to plan of how to spend that 2.8 probably with that. And if in and probably the purchase of land for a new fire station to get that process started also. So I still had not heard anything new about the situation at the jail. Last I heard the situation, it got worse. Well, the reports I, I, got worse. again, sheriff's constitutional officer, that is his, uh, that, that, that is his facility. Uh, and I said, I've not had any conversation with him about any, uh, poss about any, uh, uh, so this is the money that we appropriate to the sheriff's office, which I know he's a constitutional officer, but my understanding is our relationship. I, is we appropriate money. I so, agree, but we have a spouse manager who is here. So I'm appropriating I money, and I would love that. to see some improvement to the jail because, again, I hear of very, very poor conditions. What, again, there's been no requests from, as far as I know, there's been no requests in that, Clay. I mean, you, if those requests would have come to you. Have there been any requests? From the jail, Thank you. And Dr. Moffitt, I will say that I spoke with the sheriff, and he uh, he's working on an action plan, Commissioner Watkins. Uh, to address the needs that the grand jury brought up in their uh, information items. He believes that he's got that money within his budget to take care of, but he will be coming back to commission for specific uh, monies if there's not enough in his budget. And I asked him to submit that to his, uh, us ahead of time so we can make the proper uh, appropriations on that and bring it forward to the commission. So, so there's a budget for improvements, but still hasn't been presented but this is being presented i would like to table this until well, I mean, I, what is I, the what is the urgency here I, if we don't i mean I, i'm motioning the table till i get information well the the, the well, well, well we got a, we got a motion, motion table, table by commissioner watkins uh anyone want to second that motion who's that commissioner tillman got a motion and a second by tillman we'll entertain discussions at this time i'm sorry i'm sorry Sorry. Um, no discussion on that matter. We do have a motion and a second. Uh, anyone, all those in favor of the motion, the table, please say aye. Aye. We have two. All those opposed, nay. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion fails uh, seven to two. Uh, this time we'll move on to discussion on any spice items. Can, can you just tell for new commissioners, uh, we've had training on this, uh, 
This is generally done every year, uh, Mr. Murphy, if you'll come forward on items that we have a projected timeline that we'll be spending each year to appropriate those funds for those projects. Although we know this is fluid and sometimes it may change, uh, this is the time of the year where you're coming for us now and you, you submitted a detailed um, explanation as part of this allocation on what the money was going to be appropriated for. That's I know, correct. I know in particular this $2.8 million, uh, I understand most, if not all, commissioners have requested an RFP or want me to do an RFP for the new fire training station, the prior training center, similar to one that they have on Robbins. So all the other items lined on there are something that you've already had from previous years that have been budgeted to happen in these particular years throughout the, the life of the SPLOS. Is that correct? If I may, okay. this these appropriations do not address the fire training center. Okay. Um, they are money for the fire department upgrades, which are usually in talking about the $2.6 million in public safety now. Uh, it's four hundred eighty thousand dollars for fire upgrades, which is usually uh, turnout gear, breathing apparatus, those types of things that the chief requests. Uh, Nine hundred sixty-two thousand dollars for a new fire truck. My understanding is that's to replace the one that burned. Um, Nine hundred sixty-two thousand dollars for IT upgrades. Those are uh, actually had a request yesterday from the IT department to deal with uh, radios in the fire vehicles and their dispatch equipment that they have. $240,000 is the sheriff gets every year to replace a sheriff's vehicle. So that comprises $2.6 million. Thank well, you. I will be coming back with next in two weeks with a timeline change to move money forward for the fire station training center. Th thank you, Clay. Uh, Mr. Murphy, I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Sir. Lucas. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we, as, as I think you just said, that we keep track of all of those projects that have been approved and that we don't put anything ahead. You know, we've had this discussion many times that we complete those things that are out there, make sure that those are done. So if we could at some time in the near future review where we are as far as the timeline and where the percentage of completion, that kind of stuff. If we could, I know that's gonna take some time, uh, but I'd like to see that. Mm -hmm. So we stay on, on track and we don't put other things. We saw you know, over the last few years, a lot of things being put ahead of previously approved items. And, and they went to phase two, three, and so forth. And once you started it, it's hard to, to stop it. You have to keep going and complete it. So uh, I'd just like to see where we are on all of the projects. And I think that would be interesting for everybody to see what was approved previously, what we've obligated ourselves to do, and then where we are Thank on you. those projects. I think that's a reasonable Thank request. You. I think that's the timeline that we generally get, and we'll make sure you get a copy mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Watkins, you had a further question? Yes. At, so, okay. there, are no, there are no prison upgrades, I mean jail upgrades, which there are no fire upgrades. Why are we in a rush to vote for something if the projects that you're looking for are not included? I, I, I don't, and that's somewhat rhetorical, but... but they, they, well, eh. one, not a rush, but these are for the projects slated for this year that were already scheduled. And, but the schedule doesn't conform to what you guys are trying to accomplish. And may I also ask, what's moving back in order to move the fire training center forward? Let me address a couple of things. First of all, these are projects that you already approved that's already going to be scheduled this year. The projects you're talking about, for instance, the two point whatever million, two point eight million dollars that was set aside um, previously for a fire station, this body has decided to look at the possibility of doing an RFP for that. And there's no need to appropriate those specific funds until we've got the RFP ready to go on that. Uh, it's my understanding. The uh, the other items here we do have need for, and they're scheduled to do this this year. Uh, and this is the only way we get this process done and appropriate money is to vote on that so they can begin their process instead of waiting to the last minute. The other items that you're talking about have to come back before this. As you know, you've done numerous spots amendments where you come back before and appropriate funds uh, over a period of time. And I think that's just the normal process. There's no particular rush 